Welcome back, everyone, to Stay in Your Lane. I'm your host, uh, John Maley. Today, we've got Glenn Kepke back with Joe Lombardo. Uh, going to talk about some customer segmentation, but first, let's get through the intros. Glenn Kepke, let's see how many years we've been together, about a couple years now, and uh, always enjoy you. Uh, madly skilled. Uh, tell everybody what you're doing. Sounds good. So I'm kind of starting my own consulting and advisory firm. Been in supply chain and logistics for 20 plus years now. Uh, spent a number of years in Europe, a bunch of years in the U.S. You know, primarily helping shippers and 3PLs understand kind of the balance of cost and service and where do you need to go together. And so I have a strong background in collaboration and getting all parties hopefully on the same page to deliver expected results. So looking forward to today's conversation and thanks for having me on. I recognize your skill set pretty quickly. Uh, so you seem to get every seat at the table's perspective, which allows you to collaborate. I think a lot of that has to do with your your historic uh, background with multiple different companies, been involved with 3PLs, you've been involved with shippers heavily, and you've been involved with technology companies. So definitely got, uh, I, would, I would recognize a uh, mad skill set for collaborating, communicating with many people in many different areas of the industry. Um, but today, talking about customer segmentation, we're in a crazy market where, you know, just about anything works, right? But you're not going to know if it really works until there's market volatility. So how do you look at this from your perspective and what you've gathered over the years? I've been doing it 30. Joe, how many years have you been in the transportation industry? Oh, gosh. Over 40. Over 40. So 70. I'm 30. Glenn, how many are you? 21, I think, going on 22. All right. So we're in the 90s, almost a century of experience between the three of us. So that's pretty impressive. I can't believe somebody's supply kept chain me. Here, so it's like 2000, right? There's a, it's like dogs. There's a factor, I think, in supply chain of every year. It's like 20, 20 <laughs> life years. Yeah, you're right. I would agree with that statement totally. I think in, in, the, in the brokerage side that I'm in, I think the average person's lifespan is uh, two years. You know, we've defied some odds, but I think all three of us are, are definitely um, lifers in some particular fashion in transportation. Um, Glenn, let's talk about that segmentation. What do you see in Joe? Uh, feel free to jump in here because you've got the shipper experience with your Nestle background, your Namiska background, and all of your consulting work. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll kind of start and curious to get Joe's thoughts too. But I think when I, I think of my time talking with Lard, it, it actually doesn't even uh, matter what size company or shipper it is. But, you know, from the largest to the large, to the midsize, the small size, one of the things that's out there is that people often treat every customer the same, which, you know, as a consumer, that's really cool to hear. And that's great to hear. But, you know, I think the, the fact is, is there are customers that are critical to the, your business, to your longevity and your competitive differentiation. And on the flip side is, you also have customers that are very transactional that are gonna be there and whether you're there or not. And one of the things I've always asked is, well, when you think of your customers and your end customers, do you stack rank them against each other? What's a good customer to you? What's a bad customer to you? And what's one that maybe kind of swings both ways? And oftentimes in you know logistics and supply chain teams, people say, well, everyone's just as important as the next person. And unfortunately, uh, especially in market downturns and the way transportation networks work, you've got to look at segmenting your customer base, just flat out. Who are my critical customers that at four o'clock when things break, who am I going all hands on deck for? And who are the ones that can wait till Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning, or maybe just the next available truck? And the reason why it's important to start with that is it's, kind of a waterfall effect as you work with your transportation providers as to what's going on. So, you know, before we jump kind of next part of the waterfall of the transportation side, Joe, curious to get your thoughts on the end customer segmentation. You know, how have you seen it play out and what's the, the pros and cons of doing it? The two things I always keep in mind is the cost to serve model and the, cus the customer profitability. Uh, you know, when I first got into this business, you know, you never heard those words, cost to serve. 
customer profitability. Like you said, every customer was the same. We, you get the order, you ship it out. If it's Walmart or if it's, uh, you know, Dick's uh, delicate, all the same. But as as we matured and as the business has grown, you, you definitely have to consider profitability and and the cost to serve, and especially in volatile times with fuel, with uh, driver challenges, uh, <clears throat> labor at labor at a warehouse, uh, you know, they're into it, and uh, you know, customers are not the same. I mean. Uh, Carriers don't look at shippers the same, so I, I think it's 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 healthy to segment your customers. Yeah, I think it's John. Here's your take on you know the three PL side. I think for in my background more in managed trans, where you're you know you're working with large brokers, large assets, small players, mid players didn't matter. But it was interesting when you brought in this concept of let the three PL tell the customer where do they fall in their customer segmentation, right? Mm. Are they a backup customer or are they a primary customer? And well, I think yeah. we, we often talk about this term of like shipper of choice, being partner oriented, and those are just adjectives that just get thrown around way too loosely. But, you know, push come to shove, the customer segmentation is both ways, right? It's not just shipper to end customer. It is 3PL carrier to their, you know, shipper as well. So curious from your side how often this comes up in your business. Well, you know, I think the it comes up more as the market becomes more volatile. I mean, let's, let's be honest when the market is in retraction or compression state, which we are in now, uh, it's not the focal point, but it's still there, but it's, it's not a, I would say it's, it's not a decision making factor at the level it is when capacity is tight. Right? So the more volatility, the more it becomes the, rule of thumb. You have to understand, I wish and we want to take care of everybody equally. And that sounds wonderful. And, you know, one person that gives you one load a week is just as important as someone that gives you a hundred loads a week, right? But the reality is that can be that way when they're both, when the person that gives you one's a hundred percent in and the one that gives you a hundred's a hundred percent in with you because it's reciprocal. When uh, you don't do much for someone, uh, then, you know, and it's pick and choose, and maybe there's one truck for today and someone's order is going to get pushed to tomorrow, you're going to decide who, which one's more important. And it doesn't mean that you don't care for them or you wouldn't like to help them, but it's not necessarily a monetary, it's not a freight rate level of hierarchy here that you go through. It's who's going to take care of you when you need it more so than rate. It's who do I, am I, I'm going to align myself with, with the people that take care of me 52 weeks of the year and that have shown me that they're going to be there vice versa when I need them. Right? So I think in this, you kind of get back uh, to understanding the difference between a customer and a client. And your clients are going to get taken care of first if push comes to shove. And your customers are going to get taken care of second. And you want to make them all happy and you want to meet all of their expectations. But at some point in time, you get what you give in our industry. And as you know, as much as I don't like to, th to think that we have to make those decisions at times, I think we all have to. Sure. If, if you're a manufacturer or shipper and... You know, you need, everybody needs, wants additional orders or more volume than what they are allotted. Uh, then it's going to be based on ease of doing business with them, their loyalty to you, the people, you know, what, no matter what technology is in there, the people, the agreements, the, the longevity, the history, all of those things shape up who's, where they stack when you stack right, right them against each other. So as much as I would love to say that every order is just as equal as the next, in certain circumstances, you have to make decisions. And those are business decisions, not maybe monetary business decisions, but they're business decisions. So, you know, I mean, I, I equate a lot of things to if you, uh, if you call Becky, let's say, 
uh, Joe on Friday night and she's not available to go out with you. She said, sorry, I've already got plans. And then you call Amy a day and a half, two days later, and she knows that she was your second choice, right? I mean, you know, the, the reality is you have to stack rank them. But if you're a hot commodity like Joe, then they're just lining up, right? Well, yeah. yeah. They just take numbers. I think he's got one of those little red things you pull the number yeah. ticket off of. And number 72, 73. Just That's keep, right. Keep going through it, Joe. John, the way you described one of the pro research projects I did probably 10 years ago during my uh, TMC Robinson days with MIT, we looked at you know what makes a high-performing carrier with a shipper. Right. There's all this data that's out there. And actually what we found is it was not necessarily the, the size of the prize, whether, you know, transactions or revenue or lane profitability. It ultimately came down to consistency of a lane. So, Correct. you know, if I give a lane every Monday, you know, one time for 52 weeks a year, that will get serviced a heck of a lot more than, you know, that one lane that one day is five, five times. The next time it's two, the next time it's 20, right? So when you think of the the 3PL and carrier perspective, ultimately, I think the secret sauce is as a shipper is how do you fa find balance with consistency and allocation and make sure that there is appropriate time to plan, right? I think it's any of us that have kids and you know, I think in my life, it's all sports and school activities. It's like, gosh, as long as it's week to week, the same stuff, my wife and I have a plan but gosh, you start to throw different curveballs and different events, you know, we, we get all haywired. So, you know, I think if there's one piece of advice from this is think of your consistency and then how do you work with your carrier partner to have the appropriate kind of forecasting and ability to impact that as a part of whether a bid process, a package bid, your TMS selection, whatever it may be, there's different ways to achieve that consistency factor. Sure. I, I would agree with the information you 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 have uh, shared with us from a consistency of of lane volume or consistency. Um, I think we're all people that crave, need, and desire consistency aside of the of the business side. And then when we get it from a business side, you know you can count on it, right? And then that that is what supports the relationships that are healthy that you can count on. Uh, I will challenge and say. I've had clients that were wonderful to work with that didn't have consistency, but they were so consistent in how they operated, they also met that same criteria. Does that make sense, Glenn? It does. Yeah, my comment is like from a physical transportation network, like when you think of asset movement, right, in assigning <laughs> trucks, there's, I think from a 3PL perspective, for sure, that makes it easy. My comment is like specific to like, you know, physical assets moving. So 3PL working with their underlying carriers and so on. It's those those shippers that were giving that set frequency made it a heck of a lot easier to serve. And the data sure. showed it, right? When you looked at on-time pick, on-time drop, it clearly showed up as those were the highest performers. I would agree with that. I think, it, you know, consistency breeds that and then allows, allows you to build. So if you're on my side as a 3PL... You know, you you don't want to be chasing all the time. You want consistency. And when Absolutely. you get utilized by a shipper uh, in a chasing role where there's no consistency, uh, then you, you're going to put 10 times more work in the same amount of freight. And then it becomes more expensive. Continue watching on the next episode of the Stay in Your Lane podcast.